qualifications that you will get specific knowledge about being a manager uh, in a grocery store. And of course, then the University of Applied Sciences and the universities are the options for all of those who have uh, had the vocational <coughs> qualifications or for those who have uh, done the high school. So again, after the vocational qualification, it doesn't mean that you go automatically to work, but I would say that 80% go to work because that's why they took the vocational path, they are eager to work and get some money. But then there are students who see that, okay, this is my field, but actually I'm aiming higher, I would like to go to the University of Life Sciences and maybe go deeper with the topic. And then, as you can see, there are no, no dead ends in there. You can always sort of come back and study some more. Uh, this is just, well, before the school, um, all in all, I think the system um, that we um, we encourage parents to, to be home, have a parent leave and all that, but mainly the kids go to uh, daycare, either the, like the uh, daycare at someone's house or the kindergartens um, from age one <coughs> to three. So the parent can stay home until the kid is three years old and then usually at least they would go, go to work. What kind of benefit does the mother get when she's at home with the kid? Um, it is not, money-wise it is not that much, but there is a, until the kid is three years old, there is the funding from the government. But not like 100 euro, like <laughs> No, no, I would say... Um, not even, I think, it's less, yeah, that's... It has changed, but if I would say, it was salary, I think nowadays it's, um, depending on your salary, 30% mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. In Hungary, you get, I think, 7% of your salary for the first or two, years. or two years, then you get 100 or 80 euros per month mm -hmm. on the third year, in the third year, which is ridiculous, I would say. We have that like 70% uh, from the salary the first year, but then it, it goes lower. So the, usually the, when the kids uh, um, turns to one, it's uh, so the big decision either staying home or then go back to work because then the, the funding gets much lower. Mm -hmm. But as much as I can see, daycare is available for in many places, isn't it? In Finland. In Finland. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So wherever you live, you just like. Uh, inform to the municipality that yes I have a this and this year old child and now I'm planning to go back to work they are kind of obligated to, to find a place and, and from my experience I have three children we always have the best possible choose, sort of choices to choose and we were able to for example my daughter was in a home care with a with a family with a, not in our home but the other home Till um, she was four years old, and then later on in the kindergarten. So we kind of experienced both the home care way of. of what is a home care? Because when I was in Uveskula, I was walking with Alexi, with my friend, and it's a garden house area. And one house was like, hey, and this is a that's a kindergarten. I was like, but that's a private house. Yeah, but there, there is a kindergarten. The family is making a yeah. kindergarten. I was like. In Hungary, you have to have such a proper building yeah. where you get the allowance from the government that you have the right now to open up a kindergarten or a nursery or something. It is that you can, yeah, I don't even know what is the sort of proper name, probably there is no proper name in English, but it means like if, if you're qualified to, to um, nurse or, first of all, nurse, but then you still need to have this qualification of, of um, not the teacher, but like take care of, of the children. Like when you are with the kids, we, we, until two years? Uh, yeah, we, we don't mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the, with the mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. smaller kids. Mm -hmm. So you can either work in a kindergarten or if you wish, you can have this kind of a sort of daycare center at your home. But mm -hmm. of course, the, the municipality people would come and check your home mm -hmm. and see where mm -hmm. everything goes. But those mm -hmm. were very common early days. But now I would say that 
I don't, I'm not sure whether they have many in, in our village anymore. Because mm -hmm. I think that's kind of a, nobody really wants to have that in their home anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and old times it was more common. If you have your own kids, then you just have two, three, four others, and then all of them are there, and it's easier than, than working outside of home. Mm -hmm. But now I think it's more familiar to go to the kindergarten centers or other small places to work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what I was saying, what happens, um, what are the things that, um, sort of, what, why we are in those rankings, number ones, and, and why we are doing well. Um, these are the elements that I'm sure you are aware, but um, first of all, the, the education for all. So this means that there are no dead ends and we are able to support also in a way that we have enough resources for the guidance inside our school. So we are able to support our, our students. Uh, we have the competent teachers and, and we, we have sort of, um, well, let's, let's do this one by one. It's, Easier. Yeah. Um, the education for all, as mentioned, um, I think more and more now also the adults will take an absence from the work and, and study something else. It doesn't necessarily mean that they need to change their careers, but it's also the way to, to motivate. Um, many of my colleagues who work as a teacher have sort of cut the year absence from, from the teaching work and do something totally different, like uh, study to be a florist study to be uh, something to, like one is now going to the to be a hairdresser and she doesn't get to work as a hairdresser but she said that she wants to do now something with her hands and then maybe do some extra work if, if she feels like but at least there's an option my whole face for it so it can be because in Cambridge because my my, my daughter um, mother-in-law wants to be a writer. She's 60 years old, but she cannot because in Cambridge it's very, very expensive to be a creative writer. So I'm interested in who pays for it. Uh, the education is free in Finland, yes. So if I want to be a creative writer, I want to Yes, you, you would take the, you would either apply for the university um, to be a, in, in a program or if if you don't get in, then you can take the uh, open university courses. Well, they you need to pay for those, but they are like uh, ten euros for one uh, credit point. So like, we're talking about the um, hundred euros for a, a bigger course. So not much. Mm -hmm. But if you go to study in, in vocational, again you want to kind of be the the hairdresser, or you want, want to be the nurse. The payment is something like uh, fifty to three hundred euros the whole. So the education is is free for. And that's what makes it easy to, to kind of go study something else, maybe not even change a career, but have your sort of have a motivation and, and energy to your life. And as I said, that there's also the funding from the government for the adults who are studying. So I think it's all in all, they change that, but it's approximately two years you are able to have this kind of an adult funding. Again, it's not that much, it's um, probably. Well, I will check it. I think it's something between 1,500 to 2,000 euros. But again, it's it's nice money for, at least you are able to, to, to make it if you, if you really wish to study. And then also a, a possibility like this colleague of mine who is now uh, trained to be a hairdresser is that first um, she would be absent from the work and then she would work uh, three days a week. So the flexibility, of course, depending on the school, uh, the organizations, but this is how we are trying to support the adults to, to study. Uh, then, educating the competent teachers. And I think this is now the thing that uh, we have been realizing um, earlier with the basic education and now a little bit later with the vocational. So all of the teachers in Finland have a master's degree. Um, they will uh, study in the university and at least from this point they have usually been uh, twice as many applicants than, than uh, their places. But things have changed in Finland as well, even though the, it's not that, um, it's, it's not the same than in here, but the teachers are also, uh, they are tired, they are not that motivated, 
and it's mainly because of that other work than teaching. So a little bit similar than you, but I, I think that the paperwork we need to do is more related to um, this kind of a guidance for, for the students, which of course is, is needed, but it's bringing more extra uh, up to the, the, the lessons. And then the communication between the parents are, are more and more active than before. In a way, it's good. Today's parents are more eager to be involved in their kids' education than, than before, but then, of course, if we turn it the other way around, the, the teachers need to have now more time to, to, to answer all the questions that there is. And there are lots of emails coming through the system, which we use, it's called Vilma, where we have um, the schedules, we have all these who, who's been absent and who's been present, and then we have the homework in there, and that's a system which I, as a parent, I can see and I can send and, message to the teachers through that. So all this kind of extra work is, is now coming to the teachers and that's what sort of bringing them down, if, if we can say that. So what is now being uh, sort of noticed that we kind of need to promote the, the teacher training programs, but we also need to support the teachers who are working. And how could we support is to, for example, bring more learning assistant in the school. So even though the teacher is in charge of the classroom, but it would really help if there's a learning assistant doing the, the other practical things like co-teaching or then going through um, and helping the students if they are struggling with, for example, mathematics or, or with the languages or with the Finnish. Those are usually the three, three subjects where we use the learning assistants. And from the school point of view, of course, the learning assistants, they are sort of cheaper working force, but they also, they, they have education, so they have the qualifications to be with the kids. They, some of them may have a background of, of studying in university, so they are like really, really useful in the school system. Sana, yes. may I have one question? Yeah. <clears throat> what is the reason behind that the teachers uh, have to have five years study in Finland? Like in Hungary, there are the differences. Uh, primary teachers uh, might study only for three years, like it's the bachelor degree. Not four. No, no, four. No, 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 it's no, four. Not anymore. Not anymore. It used to be three, but not no, anymore. Everybody, it's, everybody it's four. Has to study five years, I think. <clears throat> not only four. Four or five. I know that we have the we have the college here. We have the Guy Ferenc College, and they have the pedagogy institute, and it's uh, three and a half years at the bachelor, and then they can finish. They have they, they can have their degree, and it's another choice whether they continue with the masters. But in Finland, only with masters. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the teachers are um, must have the masters. Actually, uh, I think I think it's ah yeah it's actually the following one yeah uh, unfortunately this is only in Finnish because we we do not have a program in English because if you want to be a teacher in Finland you need to language so this is now the, the language teacher program uh, you need to know uh, Finnish so we cannot even though university have lots of programs in English this is a program that not yet is available. So you need to, uh, it's usually these three plus two years because you need to be uh, a master. And mm -hmm. uh, it says here that what, what you have in your studies is the pedagogical studies. Then there's of course the language or languages. Then there's a communication, um, like the um, communication studies. And then there's some uh, like extra studies you wish to have maybe an, an, an extra subject. Usually we have combination that is uh, one or two languages and maybe uh, music, arts, um, textile work, these kind of combinations or, or home economics so that it's easier for you to, to find the work in a school when you have a combination of that. And now actually uh, we just in, in December got the first uh, bachelor level students from this new program where they have combined the classroom teacher and, an, and a language teacher. So those, this is a new program which will then provide the teachers who have uh, 
qualifications for both. And this is mainly now because of the challenge that we are facing in Finland that we have. We are, first of all, we are starting the English language already in the first grade. And then we have lots of people coming abroad. So it would be really easy, useful for those who are teaching the, the, the lower grades, one to, to six in a primary, that they actually have the knowledge of, of being a language teacher as well. So this is a kind of experimental thing in, in the University of Hyväskylä and now we just got the first bachelor batch out and they were very eager. They were just interviewed in the local paper in December and really, really, I can see that is sort of, again, the approach that we need to take, that we are providing more tools, concrete tools for the teachers before they graduate. And I think this is a good example of those that you have both uh, qualifications being a classroom teacher and a uh, language teacher. Well, uh, the student centered approach that what we've been talking in, in our online meetings, and I think that is sort of the, the main thing. And of course, even though I'm sure we all agree it's important, but also that we see uh, that we give resources for that. And we have the system that is helping the, the teachers to. Uh, at sort of use the student-centered approach. Um, guidance counseling is in every school. There are enough people for doing that if students need help. And then if, when we go for the vocational and higher education, of course, there are uh, individual learning plans that we do together with our students. So we are making sure that they are studying the subjects they need, they are motivated on, and then sort of it's kind of a matching to their, their plan. Yeah, this was actually already said. And, and even more and more resources for the guidance counseling also from vocational and higher education. Because maybe earlier days we were thinking that, okay, if, if the person wants to be a hairdresser or uh, interested of being an electrician, then it, it's fine and they're motivated of studying it. But there are other issues with the young adults, as we all know. So we, we need the guidance and, and counselling for, for supporting them, motivating them together with the, with the teachers. And many times when I was working as a vocational teacher, I worked together with the guidance counsellor so that we were kind of co-teaching. So it was easier for me when, when she was there and we were doing like some project work, so she could use her uh, expertise to help my students where I was more responsibility of the, the content and about the overall subject and she was more about those uh, supporting elements. And then um, assessment and evaluation, this was a part that Orsi was um, having in online and I think we will come back to this later, but I think the main important thing that when we are, when our kids are uh, in a primary or anyhow in, in a school, they are, they all sort of have their own, own study plan in a way that if, if they're struggling in learning, they would have a different way of, of seeing when it's, it's the assessment. And in a very practical way, like having an extra 15 minutes time to do the, uh, the test of, of the languages or mathematics. Uh, sitting in a place in a classroom so that they are able to see and hear properly uh, and not to be uh, too affected with, with, the, with the other students or having a quiet room so that it's easier to, to concentrate and doing the test. So different kind of very practical things. And, and of course the thing that it's not just about the test, uh, no matter what is the subject, uh, the students are not assessed according to one or two tests, they are assessed during the whole school year. So even though, the, like my son, it's um, He's quite good at school, but with the uh, music, and he likes to sing. But there was a thing that there was a music um, test, and he had totally forgot it. And we remembered it Sunday evening, and, and they have been writing uh, in their own book some elements that what, what need to be, um, what they need to learn. And it was like half of the stuff were in his book, and half we couldn't find. So it was like in a paper, some things were gone. So there was nothing to do than just try to memorize the thing that he had and I said like try just look at someone else's book before the test that maybe you can get something out of that. Well he didn't and he get like five. So we are scored from four is the lowest and ten is the best. So he got five which was 
shocking, <laughs> you never got a score of five, so like, it's okay, it's just, it's just a test, but you've been very active in the, in the lesson, so um, you've been singing and doing all that, so I'm sure the teacher will look at the one test, it doesn't mean that it's the whole, like, um, evaluation. So in the end, he got number seven from, from the whole course. And this is the way, uh, also as a parent, I can be relieved that maybe one test, it doesn't mean that it's the same as the final result. But also on the other way around, even though you got 10 from the test, if you do not behave in the classroom and you cannot, you never uh, be active and you're kind of pulling or whatever, you would definitely not get the number 10 from, from the whole course. So kind of um, merciful for, for the students to realize that they can, they can do better and, and by being active, it's, it's a big deal. And what do you have to fall for? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, then it's failed. So uh, actually, four is already kind of a fail. It's uh, like one, two, three is failed. It doesn't matter yeah. how failed it you are. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, so yeah. It can be one fail or three fails. Or what does it mean? So yeah, it, it means like if, if you're getting the like from test number four, it means that it's usually you need to do it again. Yeah, but they are not. I I have not heard that there are many of those. But of course, it's um, depending on the subject. It and actually, sorry, it sounds like an interesting system where you uh, calculate because here we also have similar system that we have marks throughout the year, but we grade from one to five, where one is the only failing mark. And in a system where they grade from one to ten, one, while one, two, three, and four being <coughs> a failing grade, they might get like a one, a two, and a four, all failing grades, and they won't be able to pass even though they get a couple of eights and sixes. Probably it's like this. Um, well, if, if you can test the four, if it's either you can discuss whether you do the test again or it just stays there, and then again, if you're active in a classroom, it doesn't mean that you are failing the whole course. Mm. Yeah. Because what, can you get a one? No, 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 it starts from four. And I don't know why. It is. It's, so why is that? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's four, and then there is nothing under that. And that's, that has been a long, long time. Uh, in vocational school, we have this one to five. Mm -hmm. So it was one to three like uh, six years ago, and then they changed one to five so that all the levels are one to five. Mm -hmm. But one is failing. When, when you have one, you fail. No, actually, in vocational, one is like. It's the lowest, but then you pass. You pass okay. with the one, yeah. And, and then in comprehensive school, you pass with the four, but it's very, very bad. And if the whole course, like from the ninth grade or the, or the eighth grade, for example, you are, you are uh, going to get number four from English, you need to have a discussion with the teacher that whether you take the whole course or again, you do a test again, but usually the number four cannot stay in, in the documentations because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not looking good, especially after the ninth grade, because then you need to apply to study somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's why the uh, sort of the eighth grade spring is critical uh, that what will the ninth grade look like. And then if there is a need to sort of do the year again, it's usually that you do the year eight okay. twice. Mm -hmm. But then is it a shame in Finland that, oh, I have to do year eight again? No, no, because there are maybe when I was studying, like, oh my god, they, they, they need to do it again. It was more like, oh, mm -hmm. he or mm -hmm. she is so bad. But now it's more like uh, maybe there are some um, elements into the teaching or into the learning that it, it is better to, to sort of do the grade again. It's not just one subject, it can be the whole whole learning process. Or so, maybe mm -hmm. the person had been sick, sick or not, not been able to attend to the class or the family have been traveling, so there are many uh, reasons why they are sort of doing the year two or, or eight twice, so it's not that kind of uh, mm -hmm. showing. Anything. It's not that the student is mad, like, oh, this is stupid guy and he had to repeat. Yeah, like this. yeah, no, okay. no. And, and especially, uh, and the same thing actually goes with the, with this kind of a smaller group ideas, because beforehand we were talking about when, when we have these smaller groups, for example, this is my classroom and I would take three of you to go to the silent room so it's easier for you to study there. It's not because you are uh, sort of a troublemakers or, or you are the, the, the worst in, in a classroom, uh, as to say, but it's, it's mainly to support your learning. Maybe they, you might have some difficulties of 
of learning because you need a quiet environment, but it's a mixture of, mm -hmm. of different kind of uh, needs, not the, necessarily the one who is sort of getting the, the lower grades. But it also has an impact on how the kids are uh, sort of socialized because then they are grown up that hey, we have uh, partners in the, in the lecture, in the class, and they need some special support or some special environment. And then they are grown up with more openness to people. Yeah, yes, uh -huh. yes. And also that it's not always the same kids. Mm -hmm. It might change. So again, there's <coughs> like, uh, limitation that only those can go or only those have to mm -hmm. go. So mm -hmm. everybody, not maybe not everyone, but most of the kids, for example, in my, in my children's classroom, have had the... Uh, opportunity to go to the quiet room so like earlier days that has been seen almost as a punish, punishment in mm -hmm. a way that you cannot learn here you need to go there but now it's more like oh, I have an opportunity to <coughs> kind of study in different learning environments. Is it more like sort of a positive pedagogy how we treat the kids? Yes yes mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's approach from from that like um, positive ways of like the way that oh it's it's positive thing that you learn better when you are standing so let's have a kind of a standing different table, table for mm -hmm. you it's mm -hmm. it's positive thing that you learn better when you are in that quiet room so we, we we have this opportunity for you not the other way around which was 20 30 years ago that oh you, you are not able to learn in this classroom so you need to go mm -hmm. outside and for example when a teacher sorry when a teacher is using two rooms then She's just uh, running in between the rooms, or they are next to each other. How, how is it? Uh, usually, it is in a way like if this would be my classroom, I have a door in the, that, that goes to the corridor, and there's another door for the smaller room, and, mm -hmm. and then either the learning assistant will go there. Mm -hmm. Usually, the, the classroom teacher is not in, in both rooms. Either mm -hmm. it's another, it might be a special education teacher or the learning assistant mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it's or it's even good. in here, I might have one or two learning assistants who would say, like, okay, um, you could be my uh, learning assistant. And, uh, yeah, yeah, let's, you work with these and I work with these, we do some group work. So this kind of um, di divided groups inside the classroom uh, or in a minute I see, like, oh, okay, this is the idea. And then we kind of uh, work together, together with these students. And then how many students do you have in one class? That mm -hmm. varies, that varies a lot. Um, my son, who is now in, in seventh grade, when, when he was in, in sixth grade, they had only 70. And, and the other son, who is now in sixth year ago, in fifth grade, they had 27. So, um, but usually 20 is like a average, 20 to 30. I think 28 has been a maximum, but some of uh, the schools where it is like impossible to, to uh, divide the group, like in, in our school where we live in a small village, that they needed to just have all the kids in the, in the same classroom, so they have this 27. And then it might happen that there are three teachers with 27? No, no, it's just one. One classroom one? teacher. Yeah. And then the substitute teacher. Yeah. And how many substitute teacher? Might Again, work? this varies from the school. Um, usually it's just one in mm -hmm. the small schools. But then when we go to Yuvaskula, for example, uh, one of the schools where my husband is teaching, they have this like combined uh, classroom with the fifth graders, so they have 50 students but two classroom teachers. So they are all in, in a very big classroom and then they are of course using the learning environment, dividing the groups or uh, doing small group groups, but all that, but all the time two, two teachers. But then 50, 50, 50 students, yeah. so it's 25. Oh, okay. Do you have these silent rooms in secondary? schools as well or do you mean you only have them have the opportunity to separate kids in primary school? Um, usually in, in, um, in a secondary there is not that there are no learning assistants so mm -hmm. uh, I think the option would be then that there's a guidance counselor but again depending now not all of them are can sort of come to the classroom like I said like I had a friend of mine who was teaching with me, but because she had the background of, um, of also being a teacher and, and knowing that the subjects that I was teaching, so I would use her when, to sort of divide the group. But usually in both in, in vocational and high school, we have all the kids together. But in vocational, the groups are smaller. They are like 20 
uh, or 15 to 25 would be the normal size, and in high school, um, <coughs> 20 to 25. But what, what they could have, they could have this kind of a sort of limitations, like we also have uh, in global grades that some of the groups come at eight or nine, and they have like maybe mathematics or languages, and then the other groups come uh, hour after, but stay hour longer. So these kind of uh, ways of, of changing the schedules. Yeah, you know, you had a question. Uh, yeah, it's because so I am really interested in specialty, so students in specialty, so and struggling students. Mm -hmm. So. I have a feeling, and I would like to uh, you to confirm it or uh, say that it's not true that by the time students finish the first, the elementary level of their studies, the special needs students get enough help to learn how to learn and continue on their own. Do I feel it more or less right? Um, I or mean, do they just finish the elementary system and then do they get drop out or do they go in a different track? I think it depends really much about uh, how much support they need, like mm -hmm. uh, what is the level of, uh, of special mm -hmm. needs. We, we have the students integrated in, into our uh, classrooms and that is also one reason that some classrooms may have like two learning assistants mm -hmm. if we have a kids with a special needs inside the classroom. Uh, they usually go with the with the normal school uh, until the grades uh, the nine or even the high school. Mm -hmm. But then we have this kind of special uh, units in vocational section, for example. Mm -hmm. That um, of course they can easily go with the, the normal vocational school. But if there are limitations of, of um, walking or mm -hmm. talking of or whatever, then there are these special schools. Mm -hmm. And of course, also from the grade one to to nine. Mm -hmm. But mainly uh, they are integrated. Yes, but the those are for those special needs are for the complex needs. Yes. Okay. yes. Mm -hmm. And usually those are the places where the students live, like they also live there. They mm -hmm. really are further out and they can stay there for the whole week and then go back for, mm -hmm. uh, during the weekends. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. And just a, a, quickly about the uh, the curriculum, uh, one sort of a major change was the curriculum that changed uh, um, in 2014, and this was now taking the uh, so uh, successful um, phenomenon-based approach in, into our system. And, and what it really sort of meant, uh, first of all, we, we see the schools as a learning um, communities. This means that when we are start building the schools as an architectural point of view, we always uh, wish our own and, and write down that there is a library inside the school, so in the same building. The sports facilities are well for the school use, but even more for, for the evening use, so there will be activity after the school days. The home economic classrooms and textile work, wooden work uh, facilities are in a level that those can be used also after the school hours and in the weekends. And so that the school, especially in the smaller places, the school would be the place where the students uh, can meet after the school. And, and, and one thing that is usually also built inside the school is this kind of a um, youth space where, where they, they can play and then meet with one another. And, and also, what, uh, again, back to the thing that what probably uh, is sort of stressing the teachers in, in Finland is this uh, responsibility issue. I think earlier days the parents were very much thinking that it's only it's school's responsibility to, to raise a sign of the child. Now we think, of course, it's mainly the parents and, and the sort of the school is helping. And more and more and we are looking at the, it's the community who is raising. Children. So we can all be part of that, and then not just blame for the only for the parents or the teachers. But let's let's work together. And this is of course good thing. But on the other side, it brings more and more uh, communication flow between the school and the parents, which might be a bit stressful sometimes. More work, but more effectiveness. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, 
Then there's, uh, in, a, in a curriculum, there were these uh, transfers of competencies, and even here it's written down the, the working life skills and entrepreneurship. So when, when we did the, the um, development of, of our curriculum, we were really highlighting the fact that we need to give uh, some entrepreneurial basics to our students. And this was first in, in the curriculum for the basic education, and now it's, it's more also highlighted in vocational and higher education, but they have entrepreneurial courses inside the system. And not, we don't think that it's, it's because of we, um, we think that absolutely they would become an entrepreneur, it's more or less about the mindset and, and about uh, bringing the uh, 21st century skills while we teach the entrepreneur. And then of course, now the phenomenon-based and project-based studies. This is, since it's written in a curriculum, it also helps the schools to do the scheduling and it's helping the uh, teachers to plan the, how they implement it. Uh, is it the one year pro once a year project that the, the whole school is participating or is it the smaller things between the teachers? And of course, inside each classroom, each um, class teacher can do the ways it's most beneficial for them. And uh, then for the uh, assessment, as already mentioned, the, the whole year along assessment, of course, this is a discussion that uh, is continuous in a, in a teacher's lounge. How do we assess and, and, and what are the criteria? Um, is it in the same level all the way in Finland? So that's Again, the, the, the parents don't need to think that which school should we choose. It doesn't matter which school you choose, they, they are working as the same. And now here in very uh, practical, there was a question of, of uh, how much English do we have? So the English is the, the, the first language and now started in a, in a first grade. And this change came just a few years ago. Before that, we, we started to study English in the third grade. But now you can see that the first grade, there's a one hour English at least. Plus, if the classroom teacher has any, um, not even a qualification, but even an interest, they could be this kind of small, um, like learning through play kind of approaches in, inside the classroom. And that's fantastic. I've been looking very closely with my children's school. They have a fantastic English teacher who has been doing that even before it was in a curriculum. And it was so nice to see that how in very early age, I'm sure you are even more familiar of that, the kids will learn, learn the new language. Yeah, sorry to ask. Um, do they get paid for this? I mean, uh, for this plus hour, Playing, learning together, or because in Hungary it's not paid. Uh, yes, before we had the um, <coughs> like the official uh, English language in there, there was um, um, well, not even one hour in a week it could be a less. But yeah, it was inside her schedule, and he was uh, she was paid. Yeah. Okay, so. But, but if it's inside the classroom, like I'm the class teacher and I, I wish to do the bilingual, then it's not paid extra, but it's more or less like if I... But you can do it. But I can do it, yeah. So yeah. You are trusted and you pay. Yes, yes. That's what we're missing. Yeah. I have a last question later because uh, um, during these uh, six points that you mentioned, yeah, I was taking notes and I was looking at uh, what are the things that are very similar and differences between the Hungarian uh, uh, Finnish system and uh, uh, this is a fear of mine on this course that uh, I, would, I would come again to the same solution as I always do we throw some money at the problem and it will be solved and uh, because I see many teachers and many people motivated to do what you are saying and they are able to do it for example at my school um, I hold as uh, I have a qualification to be an English teacher and a Hungarian as a foreign language teacher um, I did however three years of Japanese at the uh, university and four years at high school and uh, I, I decided to teach Japanese and I talked with the headmaster 
And she said, okay, we'll arrange it. And she talked with the school district and it's now a paid course uh, uh, by the school district and it's free for the children who attend. So we have uh, the means and uh, the tools to be the same as Finland. I'm afraid we're only missing uh, the money here. Um, yes? But I need to disagree with you. Okay. Because in many times I feel that the attitude is also the key. So mm -hmm. when I have students who are struggling, who have difficulties, mm -hmm. teachers put them aside. Mm -hmm. So this level of intervention, and I feel it, it's a level further, it's inclusion. Mm -hmm. Real curiosity based inclusion not only of special needs or BTN and in our Hungarian mm -hmm. system students, but anyone. So in many cases, yes, money is the key. But in many cases, the attitude, how we turn toward the students is the key to finding what they need and how we can, how we can raise them further. It's true, but would you say that uh uh, most teachers or people who learn to be teachers are not willing or don't have the means to integrate or include the Sorry. teacher, <laughs> the students. Uh, I am needs. looking at you because we had a very serious conversation. <laughs> Bambi came here. You mm -hmm. were doing, you, this is actually you are in Kapuli and mm -hmm. you were speaking about uh, this um, special needs program. I'm not having special um, needs. I am the, the teacher are the teacher don't feel uh, don't feel need to deal with this problem. Not only special needs. I mean, adapting new ideas. Mm -hmm. New, for example, in her, uh, so that's why I'm curious to see the new methods because in Hungary, for example, methodology wise, mm -hmm. still PPP. In many cases, I'm not saying PPP is not valid in certain mm -hmm. situations, but PPP combined with translation and grammar mm -hmm. in many, many cases. And I get students, third grade students, who have had English from third grade, and they look at me like, what the heck are you talking about? What is PPP? Yes, that's a live question. <laughs> What presentation, is... practice, production. Yeah. Presentation, practice, production. Mm -hmm. But no, I... do you use it in teaching the kids? No, not I don't, but many teachers use it. Mm -hmm. So they present and practice and then... Uh... And uh, <coughs> so they have the closed practice mm -hmm. and then they have the more open practice, headway mm -hmm. method. Mm -hmm. Headway is the typical PPP book mm -hmm. or the first two editions of Headway, mm -hmm. for example, and it's still in use, mm -hmm. combined with the grammar. I have so many students with this, and then they get stuck. They get stuck at a level because they think in Hungarian. That is true. So, so uh, that's what I'm saying, the attitude, mm -hmm. because it doesn't cost any money to choose another method. It, it is a different attitude. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not like, uh, I don't think it's an attitudinal question, I think it's more of a question of uh, uh, either practice or really um, determination for the teacher to try to include the kids or uh, training. So, for example, I know myself, I have a student who is autistic and fortunately is on the uh, side where uh, he's a good student and mm -hmm. easy for him to learn, but still, I find it uh, hard to uh, use methods and look up methods, what uh, they require. I'm not talking about uh, special needs. I was trying to show more general issues. Mm -hmm. So not, so my the students who I talked about is a general mm -hmm. student, completely general. And they asked me, Lila, what, what are you talking about? What is a modern labor dictionary? That's great. Mm -hmm. Before Matura exam, before mm -hmm. the school living exam of Hungary. And they asked for a modern dictionary. What? Uh, modern labor dictionary. Modern labor dictionary. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, but uh, then it's uh, again we can go back to the triangle with the parents, the teachers, and the, who who missed out on on this and because twelve training, years. Teachers training. Yeah. You are a lot younger. I don't know about uh, mm. you. I was trained a lot long ago, mm -hmm. but they didn't learn anything about how to teach. I mean, in the classroom. Well, we Is had. Uh, um, I think uh, somewhat it may have. I don't have a comparison. I don't know how it was taught years before me. Uh, uh, very simple know-how. So uh, <laughs> we had. Uh, well, I Theoretically, had, we had. I had uh, a half year, so a complete half term uh, uh, practice at the school where I had one uh, mentor and then. Uh, she helped me out, but most I held the lessons, she shared the lesson plans, and then at the end, uh, uh, my university teacher and my mentor evaluated my uh, two or one lessons at the end of the year. And uh, before that, we had uh, a month at a, at a given school as a practical teaching where we were, where we were really under supervision what we did and how we did it and uh, we could uh, but we got a lot of freedom as to what we give on the lesson what we thought, thought was useful for the students mm -hmm. and appropriate for their levels but uh, um, other than that we had some uh, lessons uh, at university which were we were giving smaller lessons but with the with the group of future English teachers, so those were called micro-teachings. And these were up until 2014, which was just the year when I graduated. And I don't know what's, what's happening now. But it's, it's different because, uh, or it, so it's changing all the time, I can share it with you, because I started university first in 2000, and because of my personal issues, I lost uh, my chance to get the degree after many years, even though I had all, all <coughs> I really needed the final exam. Mm -hmm. Even if so I had the, all the methodology and everything. So nowadays, it's changing again after 2024, but nowadays there are many methodology lessons. So mm -hmm. if it's the combined BAMA teaching uh, course, Mm -hmm. Then you have a lot of methodology courses since first year. I mean, not methodology, but first there is the psychological background and the didactics mm -hmm. background. And then from, I think, second year already, you have the methodology. Mm -hmm. Besides the English or English language studies and literature and linguistics and your other subject. Mm -hmm. So, um, as for teaching, uh, it was always confusing when uh, I looked at uh, with the... Uh, so, I don't see a problem in most of the teachers' uh, attitudes. I see a lot of problems with attitudes here, but mostly uh, it's that uh, no one's equipped with uh, how to deal with uh, uh, different situations. With methods, it's always becoming new, and when new teachers come, when I joined this school, uh, everyone talked to me about how we teach this, how we teach that, mm -hmm. and we shared our ideas, and uh, a new te teacher came. Now, whenever this happens, uh, I find it's a very good experience that uh, we share our new ideas. And this is where the problem again that uh, there's no one under 30 coming to our school. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, so we don't like without knowledge out. Yes, yes. so it's, uh, that's my problem. Yeah. So uh, my children are four and uh, six years old, and I look to the future and I see that uh, they won't have any teachers by the time they finish yes. elementary school. So you should do a school? Yes, I'm planning to, but. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's still in the future, so let's have let's have the little one graduate in the Yeah, yeah again for the sharing is, is caring. It's it's very important that when the new teachers come, of course for them it's important to know how the school is run, how the teachers are doing, what is happening in the classroom. 
and, and of course they are new, they may not have that much um, experience, but then they have some sort of a new knowledge, a new way, and new techniques that would be beneficial for the school. So the, the more we can have these discussions, and also of course this classroom here now, that the more we, we share how we are handling our students. And, and I think this is now a good time to, to stop and, and have lunch. Um, and of course, during lunch, if there is any questions, thoughts, as we already uh, raised up a few good issues, let's let's have a talk about the either the Finnish systems or, or whatever comes to your mind. Yeah.